Before we begin, let's first configure ePublisher Designer with the diff tool so that we can easily identify custom changes in the file overrides. To do this, select the Edit Preferences menu, then the Diff Preferences tab. Notice that my configuration is already done, but I can change it by selecting the Browse button and then navigating to the appropriate command line executable. I recommend Raxis Merge Standard Edition, but there are several other good programs you can also configure. WinMerge is one that you can also get <coughs> free of cost, and so I can configure that as well. If you'd like to see a full list of available diff tools, for using with ePublisher Designer, we have available on our website the following list. Right now you are looking at the ePublisher Design project that contains custom file overrides for the WebWorks 2.0 format. The project was originally created using version 2018.2 and now I'm going to go through the necessary steps to upgrade this project to the 2019.1 release of ePublisher. First, notice that this project folder contains both a formats and a targets subfolder. This indicates that there are custom overrides being used by this project. Second, notice there is a plugins subfolder. This indicates that a reverb skin has been assigned to one or more of the targets in the project. Plugins are another type of override that cannot be directly customized, and later we will see their impact on the migration process. Third, notice that the format subfolder contains one subfolder, indicating that this project uses the WebWorks Reverb 2.0 format and it has custom overrides. Fourth, Notice that the target subfolder contains two subfolders, indicating that there are two targets with custom overrides in this project, one named Reverb 2.0 corporate and one named Reverb 2.0 neo. Now let's begin by making a backup of our project folder. Copy it and paste it. Once we make a backup, we can then open up the designer project by double clicking it. When ePublisher detects that you're working with the project that was most recently used with a prior version of ePublisher, it prompts you with a message saying that to ensure compatibility the project will be configured to use the older version of the ePublisher formats. <clears throat> this doesn't mean that you can't change it later, it's just a safety precaution so that your conversions will not fail once you immediately try this. So I'll select the OK button. By going to the project menu and selecting project settings, you'll see that the base format version is set to 2018.2. If I continue to use this project as is, everything will generate as before. However, I will not get many of the benefits available in the 2019.1 release of ePublisher. In order to get all the benefits of the new release, I must manually upgrade the base format version setting as well as migrate any customized file overrides. But before I do that, I want to uh, do a generation with the current formats. This will allow me to later compare to see how the new generated content compares with the older version and, and adds for a nice uh, complete. So let's generate it now.
that's the Neo target. Now I can select the other target, the corporate target, and also generate it. Now let's begin by making a backup of our project folder. Copy it and paste it. Once we make a backup, we can then open up the designer project by double clicking it. When ePublisher detects that you're working with a project that was most recently used with a prior version of ePublisher, it prompts you with a message saying that to ensure compatibility, the project will be configured to use the older version of the ePublisher formats. <clears throat> this doesn't mean that you can't change it later. It's just a safety precaution so that your conversions will not fail once you immediately try this. So I'll select the OK button. By going to the Project menu and selecting Project Settings, you'll see that the base format version is set to 2018.2. If I continue to use this project as is, everything will generate as before. However, I will not get many of the benefits available in the 2019.1 release of ePublisher. In order to get all the benefits of the new release, I must manually upgrade the base format version setting as well as migrate any customized file overrides. But before I do that, I want to uh, do a generation with the current formats. This will allow me to later compare to see how the new generated content compares with the older version and, and adds for a nice uh, complete. So let's generate it now. Now we are ready to perform the upgrade. Again, select the menu project and project settings. Select 2019.1 and then the OK. It hasn't been saved yet, but it's a good idea to go ahead and save it because part of the conversion system uses the uh, tracks the file date and contents of the project file. So I'm going to go ahead and save that now. And after I've done the save, let's go ahead and do it generate all. I'll select the Neo target first. Just just to see what happens. We have we have still not migrated to 2019.1. Oh, and now you know why because if you haven't migrated your changes yet, you're going to get all kinds of uh, errors in the log. But that's okay. We're going to fix that now. You'll see that most of the errors have to do with various customization in the design of the skin and the SAS files that generate that skin. So you can see those errors right here. But really, we don't need to, to worry about uh, analyzing the log file itself because we know that we have a, a changes that need to be migrated into our customizations. From ePublisher's designer interface, you can access your, your format overrides most easily from the advanced menu. So let's start by looking at our formats overrides. At this level, we can see that there is exactly one overridden file called skin.scss. Let's take a look <clears throat> by using the View File Differences menu item. We could also edit the file directly from here, but it's maybe more useful to see what how things are different from the originally original versions. Notice in the left-hand window, we can see that we're looking at the installed 
scan.scss. And on the right hand side, we're looking at the custom override of scan SCSS that was done using the 2018.2 version of ePublisher Designer. Right away, we could see that there are a number of changes as evidenced by the highlighting of the diff tool. And quickly, you can see that this could get very confusing and maybe even more difficult than you're able to resolve. Because if we just brute force take all these changes into our file by selecting these arrow buttons, we might lose the customization that we already have in the file. So let's stop for a moment and regroup. Let's go ahead and close this window. And maybe it's a good idea to back up. Keep in mind that you can always reset the version back down a level to, to find out how things look before the upgrade was done. So let's go back to project, project settings, and let's lower it to 2018.2. And let's go back to the advanced menu, manage format customizations. And here's our skin.scss. What we want to do now is we want to figure out what was actually different beforehand. So let's do view file differences again. And in this case, notice how there's only one difference from what was in 2018.2 versus what is in the custom project. So now this looks a lot more maintainable. So what we, what we recommend is that you use some type of commenting system or standard practice. So what I'm going to do here is put a comment, and you'll need to use what is referred to as C-style comments within a, a SAS. Now you, you might want to use the name of your organization, uh, and really the main thing you need is just a way to identify it. You could put some custom notes about why you did the customization, uh, but I'll leave that fine-tuning to your best judgment. But for now, the main thing I want to do is to know that it was customized. So I will make that change <clears throat> and then save the file. And then we can go back to project, project settings, elevate it back to 2019.1, and go back and repeat the same process. View file differences. But this time, we don't have to know as much because all we have to do is look for the cleverly placed comment that will identify our one and only customization. And here it is. So as long as we don't clobber this customization, our, our customizations will remain intact. So let's start the process at the top of the file. So one by one, we're going to go through each change that makes the 2019.1 version of skin.scss different from the version that we've got customized. And I don't have to analyze any of this code here. I just merely need to bring it over one by one. And it's a good idea to go ahead and bring all the changes over, even if they are just white space. Because what we want to do is, is create what is often referred to as a clean diff. Aha, and I have to be careful. I don't want to lose this change. And that's it. Now we have upgraded scan.scss, and we can see that our, our one customization is fully intact. Now all we have to do is save it. OK, that wasn't so bad. Now let's continue the process for our target custom overrides. And in here, we got a little bit more work to do. 
we don't need to worry about our custom image. We'll assume that that's good to go. Let's take a look at our SAS files. Okay, so we've got uh, three files here in the SAS area. So let's take a look at colors first. And once again, we can see that we've got customizations that have not been labeled. So to be fully safe, let's go ahead and back up again and label our customizations. By going to Project, Project Settings, set the version, and open up the file again. Once I have all my customizations labeled and save it, let's go ahead and do these files as well. Okay, so we've got the SAS files done. Let's go ahead and now elevate the base format version to 2019.1 and bring over the, all the changes. Okay, skip that one, skip that one, bring that over, bring that over, bring that over. It's important to bring over the ones that the new values because that will break the conversion. So we just don't want to bring over when there's a conflict. Okay. We have now upgraded all these SAS files and we're now ready to upgrade the ASP files. Let's do the same thing. The process for upgrading the ASP files is very similar to upgrading the SAS files with a couple of minor differences. So let's begin with connect.esp. Notice how in this case there's only a one line difference. So it's up to you if you want to go if you want to use a comment to mark this one, but as you can see, uh, there are no changes to be brought over from 2019.1. So in this case it's already been upgraded. But for good housekeeping, we can put a comment here. Notice how that when I do commenting with the with the ASP files, it's a little bit different. I have to use an HTML comment formatted as such. <clears throat> so save that file and let's look at the footer.asp. Okay, this one is a little bit more complicated. So let's go ahead and close it and go back and do our little trick of setting the base format version back down to the prior version. 
so that we could take a better look at this. Okay, so we notice here, if we look at it from this perspective, the change we're looking at is quite small. So let's do a trick here. We'll clean this up a little bit. Okay, now let's see how that looks when we go back up to 2019.1. Okay, so let's begin. Okay, so this is a little tricky. Whenever you see uh, conflicted changes like this, it, what's happening here is the diff tool is a little bit confused about what is overlapping. So what I like to do is do a little trick. I will take the contents, I will copy my change and put it over temporarily to the location. Notice how it's, it's underneath the table. And I'll paste it. Right here. And that way I'm helping the diff tool get its bearing so it knows how to line things up. So notice how I have my change I actually put it over on the left hand side so that it lines up on the right hand side. So now I can actually see the real change that was made and I could bring it over I can close it down I don't need to save the left hand side so I don't need to save that file and let's take a look at it one more time and here we can see after our table in the footer we have our own custom code and I think that is going to work pretty well finally let's look at splash.asp view file differences and as we can see, there's quite a bit of difference here. We've got embedded links, um, so embedded styling. So we probably better go back and annotate this a little bit. So let's do our little trick here. Let's go project, project settings, lower to 2018.2. Go back, select splash.asp okay I think what we want to do for this one here is Label that part. Boy. We can use C style comments because we are now 
in embedded CSS code. So let's try this. This kind of gives us hopefully something we can work with. Let's go back and upgrade it. All right, well, these are easy. So these, I think I'm just going to go ahead and leave them intact. I don't see anything in between. And the same thing for this. So I don't need to do anything in for these this area of the code. And at the very bottom, aha, here's a piece of code that got moved out of the splash page. So I can remove it. And now we have fully upgraded our splash.esp. OK, now that we're done upgrading the Neo target, we need to upgrade the corporate target. So uh, this should proceed pretty much the same way. The only difference between the Neo and the corporate target is that the Neo target did not use a plugin, but the corporate target does. And the way I know that is because I can go to target settings and I can look at underneath WebWorks Reverb 2.0, you can see that it has a skin setting. So that's what tells us this is this there's a corporate target. <clears throat> So let's begin our process. We don't need to do the format customization because we've already done that. So we only need to do the format customization upgrade one time and then we need to do the target customization for every target in the project. Let's see what we got for corporate. Don't have to worry about images. So let's look at connect.asp. Okay, so let's view file differences. Okay, that's okay. We don't need to worry about that one too much. And looks like these are all items that were not originally customized. So one thing you'll notice here on set on files where you have a plugin is that the comparison is not with the installed version. It's with a file that lives over in the temporary area. And that is because, in this case, the plugin has its own customization to connect.asp because plugins are basically overrides that are packaged in a way so they can be easily used across multiple projects. So what I need to do here is uh, I need to probably, to be safe, I need to label any customizations that I have in this file. So let's start by doing that. Go to project settings, set it to 2018.2. View file differences. We can label this one or, or not. I think I'm not going to worry about it because it's so small and so self-contained. So really, this is the only customization. So maybe I will label it because that's the only thing in here. Just so any future maintainer of the project will not have any doubts or uncertainty. Now that I have it labeled, I can go back and upgrade it again. file differences and I can see that's my one customization which means all these others I can take them blindly okay we are done we are now ready to do our first generation with 2019.1 formats. Let's go ahead and save the project file. And we'll start with Neo and do a generate all.
and then select corporate, generate all. Now that we've finished the conversions and there are no errors in the log file, we are almost done. All we need to do now is verify that the generated output does not generate some, any errors and we'd like to compare it to our originally generated output. So let's first take a look at the output itself by loading it directly from the file system. We'll look at the corporate target first since it's already active. A little trick here is you can right click and inspect if you're on Chrome. You can also press the F12 function key for any browser to load up the debugging tools. And what we want to do is we want to look at the console to see if there are any errors being generated. This is generally your first indication that whatever we did to migrate was not completely done properly. But in this case, it seems to work. Let's try the other format, Neo. Look at the console. Seems to be good. Press a few buttons. Seems to be good. Notice how we now have the published date on the footer. And we also have the last modified date as well. Okay, very good. There's a special case that does not show up in the UI of ePublisher Designer, and this has to do with format customizations to the shared files between formats. Shared files are transforms and other files that are used across all the formats, <clears throat> and most often this is uh, done to handle changes to locales where you need to specifically customize something uh, for a different locale. So let's take a, take a look at that special case. Inside the formats folder, you'll see an instance where there is a shared folder. Now this shared folder could also show up inside the targets area or inside an actual specific format area. So it has a, it's a very special case, but typically it's going to be located in the formats folder because that way it can be shared by all the formats and all the targets. And for this case, we have a, a common folder, and inside that folder, a locale folder, and inside there, the locales.xml file. So this file, just like the other files, must be upgraded to the 2019.1 format so that everything will be compatible. But unfortunately, ePublisher Designer does not have a user interface to manage this customization, so you'll have to do that on your own. But it's really not that difficult, especially if you know how to use your your diff tool. So <clears throat> as you can see here, I have the formats area located in the installation area of ePublisher. So we've got the 2019.1, 2018.2, and so on, depending on how many formats you have installed. So the first thing is to figure out what has been customized. So let's start by navigating to the shared area that contains the locales.xml file. And I'll use my handy menu here. Don't know if you can see it, but basically I'm going to queue the locales.xml located in the 2018.2 area to be on the left hand side. And on the right hand side, I'm going to have my current file. And you can see it here again. On the left hand side, I have 2018.2. And on the right hand side, I have my override. And we can see that the only change is we've changed the search scope all label from all to everything. So if I want, I can put um, something here to identify that. But in this case, I'm not going to put a comment here. 
because it's it's uh, it's pretty standard that we just change things. So let's take a look at that. So we can actually see without doing anything, we can come over here and change this version label from 2018.2 to 2019.1 and then redo the compare. And in this case, there are no differences. So we don't have to do any work. But if we had, we'd gone through the same steps and brought over the changes, and then we'd be done.